Hey, what's going on? It's Boss Brit the Most Flat. What's up? It's your girl DJ XL. And this is the No Homo Show. Where everything we talk about is homo's gay, 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 gay. I want some verbato too. What is it called? <laughs> verbato. What is it called? Verbato. Reverb. Oh. Verbato. Welcome back, guys. Make sure y'all like, subscribe, and comment. We back at it again. The Homo Show, your favorite show. Also, listen to us on Revolt Podcast on Apple Podcast, Spotify, but you know the game. Yeah, shout out to our new home over there, Revolt, y'all. And make sure y'all get that merch because we do still got some merch in stock, and we got new shit on the way, y'all. So just keep, just stay tuned, y'all. Rock with us. Just keep rocking with us. We ain't even at a hundred episodes yet. You know what I'm saying? Damn near. Woo! Look, I ain't got no drink right there. <laughs> All right, y'all. Here today, per usual, with an awesome episode on the way. I'm going to let our lovely guests do the honors of introducing yourself. So please let the people know who you are and what you do. The baddest bitch in the room as she coming through hey. on the No Homo Show. So y'all stay tuned. Hey, oh, come oh, on. She heard Shamar. She heard Shamar. <laughs> Not she you inspired. Like, you know, it's giving because she inspired. got vocals too. We on the No Homo oh. Show. <laughs> <laughs> come on. Did it, did it, did it. <laughs> 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 hey guys, it's your girl T.R.E.J. A.K.A. T. from the number one hit movie Secret Society. Damn. But you know, y'all already knew that. So stay tuned with the No Homo Show and see what we got cooking up today. Yeah, yeah, because we about to get up in your bed. Y'all about to we about to get up in your bed naive. I don't you think I'll sign up for that. Yeah, I saw the jacket. I like the jacket. I see you the know, jacket. it's giving rep the Secret Society everywhere I go. It uh-huh. was actually made by. A designer out in Macon named Destiny Walden. Okay. So thank you, girl. Shout out to Destiny Walden. Know. Not after this. Shout out. It's pr- the price going up. The price going up, okay. baby. It's the custom merch. You okay. Know? Period. Welcome to the show. So um, yeah, I want to just say for the record, you are our first trans woman on the show. Me? Yes. Oh, good. Finally. Yes. Good. You know, I feel like y'all was slipping with the representation around here in the nah, street. No, we not We ain't slipping. trying to slip. That's why we got you here today. Oh, is that why you was backsliding? Oh, What backslide me? Backsliding means y'all trying to double back now. I think y'all oh, have no, uh, no. 100 episodes we, in when we should have been first. We actually don't know too many trans women. What? We don't know too many. On top of our head. And we have, like, talked to Sydney Star oh, a long time ago. Mm-hmm. But, yeah. uh, and I... We have trans I know, men on I, here. I know we're going to have her on here. Oh, soon. for sure. You yeah, know, yeah. that's my sis. I love Sydney. Um, yeah. Yeah. Known her for a while. Amazing girl. Yeah. yeah, so we got you up here representing today. So thank you for making this a historical moment for us here at the No Homo hey, Show. You know, it's the spirit fingers for me. <laughs> and if that is the correct way to, pro- like, trans women, that's okay to say, or is it? Well, I'm going to be honest. I don't live by labels. I create okay. my own, so I'm in my own lane. Okay, you period. can call whatever y'all want. Just don't be disrespectful. I'm a chin check. Respectfully, <laughs> okay, period. Okay, we'll start with a game. We're going to start it off, you know what I'm saying, break a little ice. All right, so you already know. Look. <laughs> Do I? <laughs> it's the Skittles and Riddles. Yeah, yeah, I was like, that's a question. Yeah. In these Skittles and Riddles, is there some real Skittles in here? No, <laughs> no we ain't got baby. no snacks. We Sorry, broke. we got liquor for you, though. Uh, oh, so y'all trying to get me <laughs> drunk but don't feed toxic. me? Oh, like, no. I know it's so Uh, Not you trying to have me in here shaking my ass, making a cake. Okay, (laughs) all right. So you're gonna reach in there, pull out your favorite color. It's gonna be a riddle. It's gonna obviously be a gay riddle. All right. If you don't get the answer right, (laughs) then we gotta all drink. I'm drinking water, baby. But can I just take a sip first just to get the game started? Yeah, Mm period. Come on, red flag crew. Actually, if you get the answer right, you still gotta drink. Okay, so what type of game is this? Because it's like it's for cheating. I just created the whole rule. You yeah. did. It's, it's giving house rules, dealer rules. Okay, I got it. It's giving I'm in y'all house, so y'all do what y'all want to do. Yeah, exactly. Got it. So don't question us. You good on your drink, too? Oh, I'm good on my drink, okay. baby. Because one thing about it, the cup never gets empty. Okay, period. I don't know and what that means. And I'm going to sound good. It says somebody with water over there. Oh, oh <laughs> you okay, but we not judging. Okay. okay, so read it to us, and then when you read it, please also read the number. Okay, so I had to get my favorite color purple because purple's close to royalty, and baby, this is royal. Okay, period. She okay, got so everything a quote. She is a riddle. Yes. Baby, that part. So the number <laughs> on this is number 19, which it should have been number 7 because my favorite number, but okay. <laughs> That's too much. Um, How do lesbians settle a fight? Oh, they just says a... <laughs> Damn, I'm hoping sucks. that was it. <laughs> that's how a lesbian settle a fight? I hope so. Well, you good. Good. It's good. You know, it's good. So, you know. That's what Cardi said, your cousin. I mean, I think so, too. <laughs> that is my said. cousin. Cardi B is my cousin. 
I think scissor. I actually, I'm not even gonna lie. Like, I don't know the answer because I cut that one up. So I actually know the so, answer. So that's why I cut cricket, huh? <laughs> <laughs> You don't know how scissor? She don't know how to cut nothing straight. That's why you don't enjoy it, bitch. You be over there. A cricket and stuff. One the leg torso up. and the, our bodies don't match. All right, all right. That part. It's what's, your, um, what's your guess? Little one. All right. It's not scissor, though. It's not? Why wouldn't it be scissors? Okay. Is it scissor? I don't know. I mean, well, don't they got to first pull off a wig first, then you scissor? So it's giving two bald heads, skittle diddle, scissor? <laughs> oh, damn. You broke that shit down. <laughs> skittle diddle. <laughs> skittle diddle. <laughs> um... It said, how do two lesbians hash it out, or? Um, how did two, let me see, hold on. <laughs> Number 19. Yeah. How did lesbians settle a fight? Settle a fight. Oh, So my thing is, how y'all give me a game y'all don't even know they, the answer to? Um, <laughs> how do they settle a fight? How would you settle a fight? <laughs> she would probably want to talk. <laughs> talk it out. I'm gonna need y'all not to be talking it out during the she fight. She like Mr. Miyagi. Hey, uh, uh, it's giving Yoda. She come in peace. Uh, I don't know. I'll go with your answer. So it's giving. How about y'all take a shot, then? Because I gave a good answer. Sure, I'll take let's, five thousand shots. Uh uh-uh. uh. Somebody see, get that right, girl a pole. <laughs> We're about to see if you're. What right. is it? Cause y'all. I mean, how y'all? Uh, know? You're almost right. What was it? Basically, right. Rock paper scissors. See, I t- see. Look at God. You you're know? a lesbian for real. I am. I am. A bitch love a bad bitch. <laughs> Nikki, right. call me, girl. Okay. <laughs> Take a shot for me. Well, she got uh, it right. Mm, but I'm drinking with y'all because well, I'm a fair just, sport. We do well, everything we told as a you unit. If you get it right or wrong, right. you got to take what? a shot. Talk what you're not going to do is volunteer me for tribute. This not what you're not going to do is compare. Tell me what I'm not going to do. Oh, okay. okay. Got it. <laughs> I got, got it, up. Big Daddy. Okay. <laughs> you don't talk to me nice. Mm. <laughs> that turned into a whole film. You know, so no, it definitely gave that. <laughs> I'm in my, my soft stud era. It's giving the chaos and confusion for the viewers. I'm with all right, so let's have some fun today, okay? So um, we're going to start how we always start, first okay. and foremost, is with the coming out story. Oh, Lord. So let us know how you came by that closet. How was it for you? What closet? Because, baby, I live in a walk-in, so, honey, you can just tip tip, okay, get on great. through, change your clothes like Jay-Z said. Uh-uh. Um, for me, honestly, coming out was obvious because... I'm sorry, I don't do nothing hiding. Mm. So it's kind of like, you either gonna take me as you are or you not. And that's what it was for me. At what age? Um, shit, like this forever, out the womb. What it do, bitch? <laughs> that's what it not gave. the baby okay. cry. It gave the baby okay. cry, came out, said, ah, give me a wig, do some lace. <laughs> Crying so, and gay. <laughs> so, um, as being like our first trans woman, mm-hmm. so like, did you originally come out as like a gay boy? Or did you always feel like, so, mind you, you got to take this back a little bit. So, although I always felt like I was born in the wrong body, mm. you got to think, this was the 80s. I was an 89 baby, last of a dying breed. Okay, please. Um, but back then, it wasn't as out in the open as it is now. It was more taboo. You didn't really talk about it. And I grew up with a military father, so it was definitely Ooh. don't ask, don't tell. They yeah. were big in church and all that, so it was kind of like, honestly, I lived my whole life as an identity crisis because I did everything they wanted me to do, feeling like I was honoring my parents and pleasing my parents, but I was never fulfilled or never really happy. Mm -hmm. So I had to kind of go through life trying to figure out who Tiari was, Mm -hmm. not who everybody else said Tiari should be. Even in high school, you know, it was only maybe about six openly gay, LGBTQ, whatever you want to call it, community. Mm -hmm. So it was very small. I went to a predominantly black hood school. So it was different. You really just couldn't, be so upfront and everybody face about it. Right. But you also better know how to fight or they was gonna get your ass. Okay, period. <laughs> so would you like a feminine male? Like Of course. Like, I mean, I don't know if you wanna say male because bitch, I never look like a man. Oh. I look like this, y'all. I mean, would you, I would you like wear this. a wig and stuff in high school? Um, not a wig, honey. I had oh. hair. <laughs> oh, you had hair. Again, hair. I wasn't a ball head skittle diddle. You gotta send us a picture <laughs> uh, for context. <laughs> it's giving, <laughs> it's giving Why nobody ever wanna show the picture Because we don't revisit before. the past. We're talking about the current. <laughs> I'll be wanting to see before y'all transition just to Why? see it. I don't know. I just want to see it. But you never see it again in life, so do it matter? Ooh. It don't. It don't. See, you see what I present to you, and that's the whole thing about All right. us as a community. You got to start taking people for what they present she to you and not what you want them to be. Us. 
This I is just for you, context for right viewers. Chin, you know, just you know? for viewers who okay. might want to see. It is for viewers, but at the same time, too, even with the viewer, when you meet me, this is what you meet. You don't gotcha. meet the gotcha. picture. I don't walk up to you and say before and after. <laughs> I show when I was a when I was a stem in a film. But exactly. I, you know, I'm more power to you. I show with my eyelashes on. Oh, but you know what? But I that can was see like three years ago. Because I can see Excel being a really cute girl. Yeah, that might be my mama boricua. Hello, it's giving Spanish mommy. Yeah. That Brazilian wavy hair. All right. That was down. Bone straight when they say in the comments. Hello. <laughs> oh yeah, I thought this girl was coming at me, but I think it was a compliment. But Which since I'm such a stud, I ain't know. I had to ask my friends. What she, she say? Tell you had a bust down middle. Bust down middle part. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Not that her hair was, her hair was that be tickling my ass crack. Yeah. <laughs> Who took your ass crack? You know, it be tickling my ass <laughs> Damn, your do took your it ass crack. You do, look at it. It's yeah. giving, give her a good blowout. That, okay, period. Cut off a little ditty. Okay. So, <laughs> you said you always felt like you were born into the wrong body. Yes. Okay, so what at what age did you, were you introduced? Because like you said, it wasn't that out there. Mm -hmm. So at what age were you introduced to the fact of, hey, you can actually transition and become in who you really are? So, um... Hmm. I'm gonna say I started definitely going into college. H U Howard. Um, okay, Howard coming from there, I started small, maybe the makeup stuff like that. Which mm. actually, I was a celebrity makeup artist. Fun fact. Yeah. Okay. Um, I used that to help me come because I was a come out because I was able to be somebody else. You get what I'm saying by hiding behind the makeup and stuff. I was oh, able shoot. to see like a test run of what it would be like. And mm. I, honestly, because you know I could be the face, honey, I look good. <laughs> <laughs> but um. I'm gonna tell you, just being in that entertainment industry kind of gave me the courage, though, because a lot of people think it's scary, which I mean, it was a little, mm -hmm. but you do find solace in being able to hide behind your talent, if you get what I'm saying. Okay. So it's kind of like the better you are at your craft, the less people notice that part. Mm -hmm. I think some of uh, a lot of artists, their their best makeup stylists are of the community. Yeah, they and, really are. We're trendsetters. Look at Beyonce. Uncle Johnny made her dress. Mm. So it's just giving like, you know, we have to work so much harder mm -hmm. to be noticed because you don't want to be noticed in the wrong light per mm -hmm. se. So it's like it's instantly when somebody sees a trans person, a gay person, they're instantly automatically labeling and stereotyping or automatically just judging. Mm -hmm. But if you put your talent at the forefront, now you have something else to judge off of so that that becomes obsolete. You get what I'm saying? Right. That's not the topic of conversation. All so right. that's what I did. So you feel like you learn makeup because of your like attraction to it like learning yeah. it for yourself i would say definitely that was a start also my mom played a big part into mm -hmm. it because my mom she was gorgeous she um used to when i was younger i used to watch her do her makeup and stuff and i loved the way it made her feel mm -hmm. like if you get it like she felt her best self when she did that and unfortunately she passed away to cancer when i was 14. so Sorry i started out doing that to honor her because that was the only way that i felt like coming out of the hood and being D.C., Virginia, raised and stuff, that was my way out. Mm -hmm. Because we didn't really have too much. Being in D.C., all you had was strippers and stuff. You had Black China, Amber Rose, and all them. I mean, we had Wale, don't get me wrong, but... Oh, shut up, Wale. I oh, love Wale. Yeah. But I'm saying for the women, they had to strip and stuff to get to that next level. You get what I'm saying? Got so, it. So, for me, I was like, what can I do to make it out of this situation that's going to put me on the map? So I started doing makeup and right when I was about to give up, fun story, Yandy Smith from Love and Hip Hop, me and her connected and I did her makeup. This was like season one for her. Um, this is back when the blogs used Nicole Beachy. I don't know if y'all remember her, but she was like the top blogger at the time. First black blogger, actually. Yeah. Um, Yandy's picture that I did her makeup for went viral and mm -hmm. got over like 40,000 likes. This was before the millions. 40,000 was a big deal back yeah. then. Yeah. You know, because social media had just started. Facts. Instagram. So for me, I used that, and that was like something to catapult to a modeling career, to just all the other stuff that I've been blessed with. That's what's up. Uh, come on, catapult. I'm going to add that to my, uh, <laughs> to my vocabulary. Not the vocabulary. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So um, we'll, we're familiar with you. Okay. Cause we, we saw you on the hit movie. Secret Society. Let's yes. talk about it. Yes. As you yeah. mentioned, you know what I'm saying? You were on the first and, I'm sorry, second and third. Second and third. Okay, mm -hmm. period. Okay, so just from the start, just in general, how did you even get into acting? 
So honestly, it's a funny story. Acting wasn't my first love. I always thought I was going to be a singer, honestly. Growing up, I used to sing. Like, Whitney Houston was my idol. My mom. Oh, I thought you were about to say you sing like Whitney. Like, Oh, I ain't say that, baby. Oh, okay. There was nobody on this planet that sings like Whitney. That's too much. Uh-uh. There's nobody that could sing like Whitney. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah. With the drugs or without the drugs, Whitney was Whitney. <laughs> oh, period. I'm just being honest. Let's Giving be her flowers. Yes. There would never be another Whitney. But... That was some of the influences I had. Her, Brandy, my mom used to sing in church. So she used to always like cultivate our talent. So she's made me sing in church and all that stuff. At the choir, young. So I always thought like I was going to be a singer. Mm. So makeup to me, I would, you would ask me when I was a child, but I never thought that. Yeah. So um, what led up to the journey of acting was, again, it was that being able to put on a face, being able to be somebody else, but present in the moment. Mm. And so that's what made me do it. And I just... Honestly, no offense, y'all. It was work, but I've lucked into this because I'm an advocate of believing that you got to have people advocating for you when you're not in the room. Okay. And if mm -hmm. you've seen the movie Secret Society, you've seen Tina's character who's played by the amazing Erica Pinkett. That's one of my best friends in real life. Like, mm. I've known her for almost 15 years now. That's I actually sure. met her as a makeup artist. I did her makeup back season one of Love & Hip Hop when she was up there. And so... She yeah, ended up oh, booking she the was role. On she was on Love and Hip Hop. Um, she was with Scrappy at the time. You know, this hurt. Oh. What's crazy, y'all? Oh, I What's do What's crazy remember. is this is her. See, you speak her up. This That's is her. crazy. Uh, I don't want to answer because we on camera. Yeah, but. no, you good. I definitely remember. I thought yes. she looked so familiar. Okay. She's absolutely gorgeous. So I did her for this um, campaign we were shooting for. It was a... Um, extensions line actually i'm friends with the owner of that to this day mm -hmm. but me and her really just hit it off i heard somebody say something earlier about pisces energy she's a pisces oh, i'm a capricorn you're... so we're spirit we animals. love capricorn y'all do and so me birthday? and her have been stuck huh what's your birthday january 7th so it's coming up i expect okay. my gift from the no homo show and it better not be homo okay. <laughs> It's gonna be almost. It's gonna be, it's gonna be gay. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure. But, I mean, just a good toy, you know. Doesn't okay. hurt. Give me a rose. But <laughs> oh, I think we uh, can you make know, that come it's giving true. the hints. <laughs> but the hints. Um, she was definitely somebody who helped me into this industry because she was already here. And I remember her literally telling me, and it never stuck with me. She was living in Atlanta. I was still living up north, and she was like. Tiara, you come to ATL, I got you. Mm -hmm. And it's not too many people that say that to you to stand by that. That meant that if we had to sleep on each other's couch, we were going to do what we had to do to hustle in this game. Yeah. And I knew that coming to Atlanta would be better for me because it became Black Hollywood at the time. This was 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. So we were on the rise. You got Tyler Perry Studios coming. Mm -hmm. When I came, he wasn't even here yet. But we got that coming. We had all the TV shows filming here in the Black culture where we were more tolerated, not celebrated. Mm -hmm. So... I was like, okay, hmm, let me come try my shout out. And she was like, you know, I got you. So fast forward a couple of years, she got the role in Secret Society Part 1, mm -hmm. which she did an amazing job. And before that movie came out, she reached out to me. I was in Vegas, and she was like, sis, I, I need you to, you know, be you, and I need you to do something. And I'm like, girl, what? All right, I got you. She was like, I have the writer who's Miyasha Coleman. She wrote that book 20 years ago, Secret Society. Wow. Yes, 20, probably, I think she was fresh out of high school. She wrote all three of them. And so she was like, I have her on the back line. I need you to talk to her because we want you to review the movie and give us your opinion. Uh -oh. And so... Story getting what I, good. Story was good. Honey, got you spilling the tea, literally. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so she ended up calling me. We got on a call, and she sent me the movie. When she sent me the movie, I was like, okay. She was like, you don't got to watch it right now. I said, you know what? Because I support you, I'm going to watch it now. Because Erica's in it. I'm just going to stop what I'm doing. Before I go turn up, I'm going to watch it. Mm -hmm. Y'all, from the moment it came on to the moment it ended, I was like, there. Yeah, that movie <laughs> like, was crazy. Like, it was crazy. so good. It was yeah. crazy. So many twists and turns. Facts. And to see a majority all-black cast, to yeah. me, was phenomenal because there wasn't too many movies doing that right. that weren't about slaves and stuff like that. And it was a topic that was so taboo. Can so, we talk about the mm -hmm. topic real quick? Cause, uh, you don't want to give this like, the story away for people who haven't seen it yet. Not for the no. third. Are you no, saying for the, even the first one. Because no, a lot of people but, still no, are No, but we can still it. talk about, okay. like, okay. a trailer view. Because okay. the first thing is, they just put me on it, mm -hmm. yeah. and when I watched, I'm like, bruh. Yeah. But then apparently, once I watched it, and you, you know, you Google stuff. Yeah. You know, then mm -hmm. you realize everybody's talking about. For mm -hmm. those who didn't actually watch it, just generally, like, what is it about? So 
I'm gonna tell you, the movie is kind of like if the city girls met the LGBTQ community and they had a baby. So pretty much, it was about. <laughs> I'm trying. No, I'm the just finesse, saying because yeah. you got to think about it. Remember the city girls? They got over their whole state was about fucking over niggas doing what they had to do. Facts. You know what I'm saying? To survive. Okay. Yeah. The same two girls who were the lead, played by Raina Love, who's Celeste, and then my sister Erica Pinkett, who's Tina. That's what they were doing. They were surviving. Yeah. So they had to fuck over niggas, do what they had to do to get mm-hmm. where they needed to go. But they had a secret. So the whole point of the movie was finding out what the hell that secret was. Now I will say the secret came out a little earlier than I thought it would, but it yeah. was good because now it really made you tune in. And what I enjoyed the most about it was they didn't spill the secret beforehand or didn't cast like LGBTQ in the beginning because you didn't want to spoil the secret. We wanted the audience to be general, anybody, a man, a female, anybody could watch it because you got to think about it like this. If they would have had, no offense, my sis, Tokyo Styles, you know, um, um, King Amaya, anybody else who King Amaya actually was consulting on the project. A lot of people didn't know in the okay. first one. But if they would have had her in it instantly, the men would have already known. You know, oh, is she, is she trained? You know what I'm saying? That would have took away from the story. And that's what they wanted was to be able to have that secret for a moment so that you can tune in on the story first and then get to know the people. And so that's what it was about. Okay, because I was wondering, because I know you don't want us to really say mm-hmm. too I think we much. can say that. I mean, you can say the most because the first okay, one's already out. Okay, so mm-hmm. the two lead women. No, they're not trans. They they're are, not trans, they're but they were playing trans women. They were trans portraying women. Okay. So you got to give them their credit for being right. able to do the research and not be so offensive as well as being able to step outside themselves into this craft mm-hmm. and portray a community that doesn't get that type of light. You get what I'm saying? Okay. Because they did move and act the way that a lot of trans women did like growing up a lot and this wasn't my story but from what i've told from some of my trans sisters is that you know they had to escort they had to do stuff to survive so yeah. that's what it was all about was surviving and being accepted got you mm-hmm. okay so you didn't feel no kind of way about it just being an actual trans woman and being like why y'all didn't cast a trans woman it um, makes sense for you so or, when i reviewed the movie i'm gonna tell you that yeah. was my main concern when i first spoke with her mm-hmm. was because when i move i move with light you get what i'm saying i don't try to shoot down anything because just me seeing an all-black cast was already surreal for me right. then to get into the story but what I, I did ask them that because i tried to be as authentic as i can from what the viewers would see that's gonna be everybody's first reaction for the that LGBTQ was my first community reaction is, i like why are you getting real trans the, women you know right, yeah. but once she explained that to me mm-hmm. and i saw it and stop trying to make it what I wanted it to be instead of what the truth is Mm -hmm. they did what they had to do because if it wasn't for them disclosing that the movie probably wouldn't have reached a widespread because we even had I've even had men like real men hitting me up like oh my god thank you because we got to see stuff that we didn't get to see or didn't know you see what I'm saying and it gave people a new respect for being trans Mm -hmm. of what they have to go through the fact that a lot of trans women are dying for being them authentic selves. Right. You get what I'm saying? And everybody want to use the word trickery and all that. But you got to understand as humans, you have to disclose stuff when you feel safe. You get what I'm saying? Because okay. this is not, the world's not a safe place anymore. Right. Okay. I don't want, we, let's get into that. <laughs> okay. But I, I didn't want to go off of too much of mm-hmm. where you were saying how you got on the episode. Oh, of show, course. On but the, the I just wanted people because some people didn't watch it and it's mm-hmm. great and y'all need to go watch it it's yes different. it's entertaining for straight gay <laughs> anybody anybody. This shit good i ain't gonna it's lie good. i watched it's, it like a month ago for and the first it's time, like yeah. well i'm glad y'all did y'all homework <laughs> yeah, yeah and it's such a different i don't think we ever seen a story like you that. haven't this is so, the first of its kind okay. but i can tell you this is going to open the door to more for sure and that's what it's about is the awareness because Miyasha, like I said, she wrote this book 20 years ago. You got to think about That's it like crazy. this. 20 years ago, it's not even the same as it is today. Right. So the trans women probably didn't even look like they do now. You get what right. I'm saying? Where it's harder to tell. Right. Then she took that 20-year story and made a modern spin on it, which makes it more relatable. Yeah. But what I like is that a lot of women can see themselves in Celeste and Tina. Mm-hmm. And a lot of men, also, no offense, they can see the struggle of what they went through and have a newfound respect for them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? So it builds that tolerance yeah. and that conversation now. Facts. No, we're going to definitely get back to that. Of course. So just for you, for you as a makeup artist mm-hmm. and you being cool with Tina, mm-hmm. um, how did you get on the show? So 
from, like I told you guys, from that story of them calling me, I reviewed the movie, I was very authentic with her. She really appreciated that. Mm -hmm. So we ended up um, talking a little bit more. It was all the same conversation. They ended up booking me to be the model correspondent slash host for their Q&A red carpet. Mm -hmm. So I did it. You know, me and the girls, me and Eric already had a natural chemistry. Yeah. So me and Raina and them kind of had one too. So it only made sense for Miyasha to be like, wait, they have a good on-screen dynamic and it's authentic. So she ended up calling me after the first one came out, maybe eight months into the first one coming out, she called me and was like, hey, you know, I'm working on a part two and I have a character that I think you would be perfect for, but I cannot give it to you. You have to audition. Our director was Jamal Hill. And so she was like, you're going to have to audition for me and the director. So I was like, oh shit, I've never really acted And this your before. first time? First time. Like, yeah. I've done stuff. Like I went to Governor's Art School and stuff, which is okay. a magnet school. I got accepted to that for singing and all that stuff. So I've taken some classes, but I never thought it would be a career. Right. I always thought I was going to end up like some of these stars who maybe you'd be a singer and stuff first, then you get offered a role. Gotcha. Not you actually got to work for it. So... And she called, and I'm like, okay, cool. I'll do the audition, you know, it doesn't hurt to try. So I tried it, and when I did, she sent back the note. She was like, oh my God, that was really good. She was like, but she was like, let's see if you can do it like this. That's how they typically do it to see if a person can take direction well. Mm -hmm. Did it again. Jamal was like, he liked it. And all this was during COVID, so we were virtual mm -hmm. auditions. So they sent me back maybe a month later. I'm like, oh my God, you got a roll of tea. And I'm like... Me in a movie? Yeah. <laughs> you know, I got up, started praise dancing, you know, thinking my mama didn't know she heard me, yeah. and all that stuff. I told my dad. He didn't believe me. Because my dad was like, by this time, I'm almost year eight in Atlanta. Right. And he's like, nah, I seen you do like modeling stuff, but you being in a movie. Nah. <laughs> my pops didn't believe like, you. He didn't. Yeah. Because he's like, you know, it can't happen to my child. Gotcha. And again, you got to think, my dad's older. So seeing somebody in the LGBT community in a movie. Yeah. Like, that, he didn't know about T.S. Uh, Madison and them. Because of me, he started researching. You get what mm -hmm. I'm saying? And learning who some of these people were, Angelica Ross, stuff like that. Yeah. But he was still in that protective phase of, oh my God, the world's gonna see you type of thing. Like, mm -hmm. so you better kill it type of stuff like that, right? Yeah. Yeah. Represent me. So <laughs> gonna do I it, do it right. <laughs> him, I told him, I was like, you know, my character's a little ruthless, you know, for y'all who ever seen two, go see two. Um, my character's a little ruthless, but I was like, how do I deliver this to this character? Because is T's loyal, which I am. Mm -hmm. And she stands on the people that she loves. She, you know, rides for them. But losing a parent early, I can't really connect to an emotional side. Because I feel like I was all cried out. I feel like everything I was doing, I kind of was emotionless. I was void of that. And being in this industry, you have to be okay with being vulnerable being unapologetically you. And I feel like that was the most challenging for me was letting everybody into this character where they can relate, but at the same time, leaving a little mystery. So that's what I did. And you'll see a lot more in three, if you haven't seen it yet, of T's journey into emotional. <laughs> but I thank Miyasha for writing an amazing script though, because the movie is phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Make sure y'all go see Secret Society 3 right now on Amazon Prime. Okay. Yeah, okay. I haven't seen it yet. I'm not gonna hold you. Uh, no, because no, y'all had a little error or something like that. Oh right? yeah. So, so let's get let's, into let's that. Let's talk about yeah. Amazon let's dropping the ball that, on y'all. Because first of all, like I told y'all, rewind. We are an independent film by a black man and wife. Salute. Salute, y'all. I'm talking. They put. If y'all don't know what independent means, that means they funded it themselves. Everything out of pocket. Grind. Miyasha was so intricate into this movie because she was literally hands on, sitting next. To the director in the director's chair uh-uh can you do it like this That's she was up. every step of the way rewriting the script doing what we had to do to make sure that the movie was amazing for y'all to see even down to the fact that she helped with the styling who was done by Shaq Palmer Fire. as well out of Miami but she pulled some of the pieces out of her closet Oh, like really? Miyashu literally was hands on so you cannot take the flowers from her that for that fire. because <laughs> that was everything we're known for the fashion beyond the storyline Yeah. so just being there in that moment was just crazy for me because I'm next to people like Vivica Fox who I idolize the I goat. was Independence Day yeah, yeah. to her being okay. on my phone texting me now like this is surreal to me Yeah. being on a red carpet with somebody like that Vincent DePaul who's been in a lot of movies Um, Romeo Miller's in the third one okay. like come on now 
we have such an all star no. black cast, even down to the ones that weren't black, they were minorities, like Evelyn Burgess and stuff like that. They really delivered so much to this movie. Mm -hmm. So, why? So, I was about to say, what did, yeah, what did Amazon not drop that shit yeah, on time? How did so, Amazon Prime <laughs> mess that up? So, I'm going to tell you, I can't honestly speak for why they messed it up, yeah. but I'm glad they messed it up because it made people see that we were not just a fluke. Because right. what Miyasha did was it forced her to go into her executive producer bag okay and she released that movie true to our date which was december 15th she did it on her own website I know that's and you right. know what we had over a million streams I in less than 24 hours that's the up. only other person has been able to do that outside of a Nicki minaj and a beyonce for a movie renaissance did that you get what i'm saying on yeah. thanksgiving weekend and so for us to be able to do that as an independent black film without no major label behind us you got to give her props for that yeah, yeah. and we're still climbing the top right now because now we've officially launched on amazon prime now so you can catch it on both sites so basically y'all uh was saying y'all was going to launch on amazon the mm -hmm. 15th and it didn't it didn't we didn't even know until then because mm. we actually were uh going on a trip mm -hmm. but uh we're like yo we need to see it before you yes. know, we uh interview you but um I seen that it was on a website and they mm -hmm. were selling it. I don't know the price difference between Amazon. Put, so I can tell you on Amazon or selling it, but I was like, yo, people are anticipating this so much. So much. They probably would just. But buy I can it. tell you, actually, she did a discount off of her website because Amazon Prime, when I just checked, was ten ninety nine and fifteen ninety nine. Mm. Hers was five ninety nine and ten ninety nine. So five ninety nine was to rent, ten ninety nine was to buy. Why would you rent and not buy? We yeah. can show the rest of your family. So yeah. everybody was buying, thank God. Yeah. But we were nervous because, and we had to put our faith in God that when she put it on her website, people were still gonna run to it because everybody knew Amazon Prime. And if you look at all of our promo videos, we always said Amazon Prime. Nobody yeah. ever said her website. Yeah. So we literally, she was sending us like emails like, hey, y'all post this, post this. So all of us using you know, our fan base and everything we had to promote the movie, it was worth it because literally we have a whole new wide range of fans. Yeah. That I didn't know we got people on Africa Africa, everything Ghana talking about I've seen the movie oh my god y'all need to come here <laughs> that's what's up and that's why you gotta trust God because sometimes yeah. stuff that happens it'd be a blessing and mm -hmm. you know because on the business end you got a hundred thousand new emails that you yeah. can send out to and all for that real. stuff but um shout out to the boss yeah. lady for knowing how to Miyasha pivot Miyasha Coleman yeah. and Rich Coleman but yeah. I'm gonna tell you what's crazy is that even with that though I'm glad she's a quick thinker because a lot of people would have given up in that moment and just said let us just blame Amazon let us just wait for Amazon right. but what she said was she got into her bag and was like look how do I make sure this release for our fans who've been waiting because this has been one of the most anticipated drops probably since Renaissance movie and that, I'm just being honest because yeah. everybody's been talking about it because a lot of people are seeing because we've moved over from just Amazon Prime to Tubi for the first and second yeah. one. So a lot of the people have been in the house watching the first and second one and re-watching it. So mm -hmm. I'm getting messages like, yo, when is three coming out? When is three coming out? Then we telling everybody, oh, it's on the 15th of Amazon yeah. Prime and it ain't there. Yes. I'm getting messages, death threat. Somebody told me, if <laughs> y'all don't get this shit on Amazon Prime, I'm getting y'all. Damn. What the Turner is this? That's crazy. It's though. because these fans literally yeah. are waiting to see what happens with the story they're sitting on the edge of their seats and I'm so glad that we were able to deliver a project that lived up to it because being doing a trilogy y'all is yeah. hard yeah. to be able to not hit it one time not hit the mark two times but to hit it on the third time and a lot of people saying it's the best one yet Damn. you okay. have to see it I can't wait to see it I thought it was also very impressive that it was like back to back so it was mm -hmm. like 2021 yes. 2022 Every and then 23 mm -hmm. that's hard because it's a real production like you can tell there's a budget behind it and then for it to be independent right. independent but wait y'all want to laugh real quick at a little tea we better laugh yeah there's a little tea <laughs> so we actually shot the first and second one during COVID, like I said. Okay. But the amazing part is we did it in 14 days. All the movies were shot within 14 days. Wow. A lot of people don't understand that. It's so hard to do. Miyash and them, literally, I remember coming to set during COVID. Mind you, that I'm a first-time actress. I've been in yeah. a model for a while. Right. Face the major campaigns, everything. Yeah. But coming onto a set where you're greeted by the PAs, everybody there's greeting you like family. You got your own little trailer room, all this stuff. I'm sitting here like... Girl, for me, see. right? For Girl, me. I'm running through like, oh, city girls, we up one. Okay, so, like, this right. So when I get there and just feeling the love from Miyasha and them, yeah. the tea part of it was that that 14 days was so intricate. She had everything so mapped out That's from the top it. to the bottom yeah like, but the thing is she money. scouted all the locations and everything most movies have a location director and all this yeah. stuff her francesca rich 
um, Jamal, they literally put blood, sweat, and tears to be able to make wow. it so that we can do it in 14 days. Literally, when I filmed part three, I'm leaving to go to the airport. The next one's coming in to go film. So yeah. it was like, we literally, the only person I filmed with uh, or saw every time I was on set was like Raina Love. Like, uh, yeah. cause we filmed a lot. Um, I saw, let me see who else. Um, I think I saw Vivica one day. Erica, I didn't see her in the second one because she was filming Country Wayne's movie. Must have stayed working. Okay. Um, she was filming Country Wayne's movie. Uh, I think it was called Strange Love or something that came out on Valentine's Day. Okay. Yeah. Um, but that. when she came, literally as I'm leaving, she asked me my experience, and I'm telling her, "Girl, these people are so professional. Like, That's I was not sucks. expecting that from black people. I'm just <laughs> not feel you. Yeah. Black yeah. be blacking sometimes. Yeah, we yeah. know each other. Yeah, what's you know. Cool? Yeah. I'm talking about, but just the dynamic, y'all. I don't think I could probably ever ask for a better set. And I've even heard Vivica and them talk about how the set made them feel. And Vivica's been in the game since. 89. So nah, you see what I'm saying? That's awesome. Like, four, hold up. So both were filmed in 14 days? All of them. All three. All three. That's All crazy. Three. The first two was the hardest because it was during COVID. That's crazy. 14 days? 14 days. But see, when I came, that's COVID crazy. was still going on, but they still had isolation, all the rules. But you got to think, if you've seen the second one, it's a lot of people, mm -hmm. like in my scenes, per right. se. It was a lot of moving parts. So you got to not only deal with just the actors and make sure that they're feeling, you know, comfortable and all that stuff. You got to make sure the cast is safe, right. all this stuff. So you got to be able to move people in that social distance type of thing. Yeah. And mm -hmm. she made it happen. So I'm That's saying dope. regardless whether you enjoy the movie or not, you cannot take away from the work and the love and the yeah. sweat equity that was put into this movie. Yeah. yeah. And um, the dope thing about it is it lives forever, right? So yes. like people are just, like you said, I'm ha I'm low-key happy I just got introduced so mm -hmm. I can watch one, two, and three. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but um, even with this uh, show, I think so many more people are going to watch it. Mm -hmm. We get new viewers and, every day. Yeah. Because Tubi is spreading, and the thing is, Tubi has become the new black stream to watch now. I I'm, love, I love Tubi. Baby, I let me tell the ratchet Tubi movie. Some of them lie. like they shot with an I, iPhone, girl. Some of them be but like, how the some fuck of them. did you just shoot without a gun? Because yeah, I'm saying, kinda, we got so many weird. DMs. Wow. Yeah. Let me tell y'all what's crazy. We've gotten so many DMs of people saying, oh my God, why are y'all on Tubi? Because y'all movie quality is so much better than Tubi. But the thing is too, you got to understand, it's a, Tubi's a community for black people. Right. So... We're getting to show a black story being showed to everybody now. That's right. why we start off on Amazon Prime and transition to Tubi so that everybody gets a chance to see the Love movie. It. You get what I'm saying? Because it becomes free once it goes on Tubi. But we waited right. a little bit. So that okay, not too get, much. We got we to gotta refund this, <laughs> y'all, yeah, yeah, yeah. so we can keep going. Yeah, yeah it looked like y'all... It looked like the checks was going up. I know, for real. Maybe the views is going up, the checks is okay. going up, but but it's because of y'all. We yeah. have to be grateful for the, every fan that stops and tells their family, that stops and tells their friends. I've had people DM me videos of watch parties they're doing for this movie. Damn. And to me, to be able to just see people enjoying my character, I never would have thought that. Imagine being a trans woman, mm -hmm. seeing yourself on a big screen where people told you that door was closed for you. Right. Okay. You don't have that option. You're shoveled to the back to be a makeup artist. That's as great as you're gonna be. Yeah. Mm. You see what I'm saying? To now being able to say, huh, resume check, I'm in a movie. Okay, a period. number one movie. That's okay, not let's number be two, clear. <laughs> That's what's up. So now that you've done this, this movie, right? Mm -hmm. Are you gonna continue aspiring to be an actor? And if so, what kind of roles like are do you feel like you're gonna get stuck in having to play a trans woman like do you feel like you could go and read for lines that are cisgender women like where are you at in that space so i've done a lot of thinking about that honestly mm -hmm. and it's crazy that you asked that question because i contemplate myself back and forth about that because i don't want to be labeled into a box because mm -hmm. the thing is like i told you earlier talent is talent Period. you you had um, cisgender women playing trans women. Right, so anybody exactly. can play anything at this point. Exactly. And the good thing that I love is that I'm passable in the way I look, so I'm not put into a box. Mm -hmm. I'm definitely going to continue acting because just because of all the little girls who've reached out to me, I'm at the premiere here in Atlanta, and one of the girls who's dark skin comes up to me, not knowing you know anything about me, says, thank you for putting on for the brown women mm. who, who were told we're not cute enough to be on the camera, or we're too dark. So it's stuff like that, you know, mm. that makes me want to keep going because it's people who's watching me that you don't know that's watching me. Right. So I want to keep acting for sure. I do not want to be put into the box. So I mm. want to audition for any role I can because I want to show that dynamic that I'm not just one dimensional. Because in this movie, you see me playing badass. I got to show you there is an emotional side to me. There is layers. There's a person who still wants to be accepted mm. by the industry now at this point. It's not even about uh, other people. It's about the industry now. Right. Showing that I'm good enough. 
I can play next to Idris Elba and be okay. Period. Speaking it to existence, you know. Hello, yeah. it's giving gorgeous. You know, it's giving hi husband. <laughs> okay, period. Yeah, cause like it's this kind of like this vendetta against mm-hmm. trans women. You know what I'm saying? And I do feel like. Well, like you said earlier, like when I saw the movie, I was like, why well, didn't just get a trans woman? Mm-hmm. But then now that you explain like that, I'm like, okay, that makes sense. But I would like to see like a trans woman just play a woman. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, no, she's not considered a trans woman. She's just Miyashi, you listening to that girl? A woman, you know what I'm saying? And see how the world would we react, react oh, to that because it would but see that's what we need which because right now everybody's playing safe so yeah. you need to set the world on fire you get what i'm saying you need to do stuff that's going to spark they controversy i mean but they would but at the end of the day i feel like too if you delivered right you're the, that all that's going to overshadow the fact that she was trans i think it's gonna be more of a shock value at the end right. versus you going through the whole movie and not knowing that's like when you see a woman playing a crackhead, playing Wanda. You know what I'm saying? True. She, she she's did not that. like she that. Did that. She crack did shit. that. Hey, hey look at Halle Berry hey. losing Isaiah. Like yeah. stuff like that. Like For real. you're going in the acting world. You are becoming someone else. You're channeling someone yeah, else. Exactly. It's acting. And that's yeah. what it's about. So if people don't understand that that it's a craft, it's an artistry, there is not much you can do for that. But just delivering your performance every time. Mm-hmm. Well, you know what? I feel like the writer had a lot of courage. Because we know mm-hmm. the Hell gay yeah. community mm-hmm. don't play. She got negative from so, that too. Right. So, um, and I know, of course, you want. Luckily, she did bring mm-hmm. our community in. Like, it was two you. in part two. I'll be honest, okay. a lot of people didn't know. So, if you go back and watch part two, it was um, myself and then it was the nurse that was in the beginning. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. True. Yeah. Like that okay. yeah. That a lot of people didn't know she really was too. So, they were thinking, uh, like, when we were interviewing last year, wait, they said, she no, was no, really no. trans woman. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So, they were thinking, like, no, it's she didn't do it. Yeah, but that's yeah. good, though. Look at yeah. us. We were past the That was good. Yeah. People didn't know, like, what was happening. So, you was able to focus on the movie. And that's what you needed to do was focus on the story. Right. Right. Forget my personal life. I'm just a vessel right now. You get right. what I'm saying? Get into who T was. Right. And this go around, I'm going to tell you, it's redemption season. I okay. think I'm going to read for like Lil Romeo. What? I'm going to be Lil Romeo. Don't read next... for my man, honey. Keep drinking. Why not? Beer. I'm going to be the first star <laughs> Romeo. It's acting. It is, but baby, only Romeo could do Romeo, honey. I can't be the Lil Romeo? Uh-uh. I can... uh, it's giving Romeo. Just show. No, no. This is Lil Romeo should do all the time. Mm. <laughs> Oh, it's giving Romisha. Uh-uh. Oh. <laughs> Romisha. So, so um, as far as you know, I know there was mm-hmm. some negative feedback just because you know there. I can understand that trans, mm-hmm. um, the trans community isn't involved in a lot of films. So the one time that they was like, "Yo, this is my time to mm-hmm. show out," y'all two straight women. I uh, I definitely understand that. Mm-hmm. But Me you too. as a transgender woman, do you think? And I know you said like. That wasn't just story. Like you wasn't tricking motherfuckers. Mm-hmm. But Definitely do you think wrong. they brought out like good points on like how people really be tricking? Um, because I was like the tampons on the, on the counter and all the counter. I'm like, <laughs> now I'm saying, you know, it is movie, so they exaggerate a little. Okay, but <laughs> I will say this though. I will say that. <laughs> You never know somebody's story. Because the yeah. thing is, Miasha had influences in this story. She grew up with some trans women back in Philly. So that, that might be the reality for some of them. Because you got to think this is back in the 80s. This probably is what they were doing to get by. They maybe did have the tampons on the counter. Brent do that when she won't be trying to have sex. <laughs> oh, really? Ah! <laughs> no, I don't, sure, babe. I'm pretty sure babe, she can just be like, you know, it's I, that time you know, t- Hey, I'm just going to take it down. I don't give a fuck. Plug it up. Uh, you know, but I was like, on, on, the, on, the sh- on the movie, it was like, I'm gonna tell you, there's only one scene point. that made me cringe though. What scene? Which one? <laughs> In the first one, when they had my good sis Raina standing up peeing. <laughs> Oh, Y'all don't hey, remember that? Don't remember when that the dude part. came in, when he snuck g- in or something? Well, no, he didn't get in yet. Yeah. Um, remember he was coming and she was standing up peeing. I, I was that like, part. oh girl, go back and watch the first one. Okay, okay. Cause that's gonna have you be like, cause you might've passed it cause you were just you know, thinking about it. Yeah, yeah. But when you, it was literally a 30 second clip. But <laughs> I was like, <laughs> okay, now so, so for the record. Uh huh. Oh, I'm a lady, so I'm gonna sit down and pee. Okay. <laughs> what you talking about? So. You stand. Right? You stand, honey. It's giving the spout. <laughs> Are you able to really have sex and not know like you you you're having sex with like a trans woman? Like, cause like I was thinking like, is that just a movie shit or like can you really have sex with a man? But if you saw in the movie, she did it from behind. From the back so, all the time, and, though. I mean, from what I was told, no homo. Okay. <laughs> you know, it feels the same. It get, if you get the right girl, honey, it gives a little fuss. But what man want to hit it from the back all the time, though? Um. A lot. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't know. So. I mean, a lot. Would you like want to hit it from the back all the time? Like in the asshole. 
I mean, they can no. want some intimacy in the front too, but I'm pretty sure she probably had waves, you know. Of, you yeah, know, because I'm like that would be suspect to me. Like, why? I mean, it was, but right? it was though. Yeah, like why I'm always putting it in your ass. Or I mean, like, but you get some men who just. No offense, you saw Celeste. Celeste was bad as fuck. Bad so, as fuck. So what I'm saying is, you get some men to get overshadowed because men are physical creatures, right? Right. So the very first thing they see is the beauty. Then the mind captivates them. So if he's so enticed by this girl being with the fantasy girl, yeah. then he's going to ignore a lot of stuff that probably was red flags. You okay. get what I'm saying? And then sense. she had the dope personality to go with it. She like did. she said in the beginning of part one. Our job was to make every man feel special, mm -hmm. feel like they were the one. Mm -hmm. That's really how it is. And that's probably how she made him feel like a king. Y'all yeah. saw her fixing them plates and all that stuff in the movie? Right. She was making him feel like the king, so he wasn't focused on that. Yeah. Yo! You see where we at? Yo, we are at Starship right now, y'all. Listen, they have anything you need for inside the bedroom, plus more stuff you can't even think about. Make sure y'all go to the website. Yes, yes, y'all get 15% off with our code No Homo Show at shopstarship.com. No Homo Show shopstarship.com go run it up y'all listen if you're in atlanta stop by their store because it's crazy but if you're not online got everything too plus more for real yeah i'm about to grab me let's to go. stack up real quick because y'all know okay now we talking real life mm -hmm. trans <laughs> homo shit yeah okay period. <laughs> let's let's get into it because we did say like you are our first lord 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 and, and welcome we need, welcome and, and we, <laughs> we need you're the hot seat you the, you Speaking for the community. But the thing is, I can't because I'm only one person. Yes, no, you're speaking from your point of view. I can I'm, speak for I'm me. I'm not saying all in, <laughs> I'm not saying uh -huh. your answer is the answer. Mm -hmm. But, yeah. you know, there's some things we have questions about okay. that, like, you know, just curious about. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, I mean, but well, curiosity killed the cat, too. No, so. I'm just saying, like, uh -huh. like stuff like that. So, yeah. quick question, going back to mm -hmm. that. So, do y'all think when dudes were doing it, they knew they was going to ass all the time? Or did they think they wasn't? So, I'm going to tell you, I have mixed feelings about it. Because I feel like if a man's intoxicated, hell, no, I ain't going to. But, because, I mean, as long as it feels, you know what I'm saying? Tighter, though? Baby, it's going to snatch. Might, that might feel like a... But good. Like, like I'm saying, like a virgin. Oh, you, you a virgin, huh? Yeah, it's giving brand oh, new yeah, stuff. That puts it tight. You know, but <laughs> I'm saying, like, I think if he's drunk, yes. Now, on a regular... I. He gonna have to know. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. Especially if you always sitting in front of back. Why are you gonna be like? Always. Is you gonna turn around? And let me see you. Right. I mean, if you're doing this all the time, it's gonna give. I need yeah. missionary. You know yeah. what I'm saying? But at the same time, too, I feel like it's taboo again. People don't want to speak on it. Yeah. That's like no offense. Like, and I hate to say this because y'all, I don't do this. But when they man be like in the assholes, lit, they don't be saying it. And they like getting pegged too. We they like getting pegged, but they just don't talk about yeah, it. Yeah, we. You get what I'm saying? Shit. So it's like. Then the privacy, comfort of their home, they feel safe. That's a safe space yeah. for them. Is it true that um, you can really get your bottom removed and get a vagina? Mm hmm True. That's called um, reassignment surgery. Yes. And you can have sexual intercourse mm -hmm. with that. How does that work? So what that works is they actually remove your penis. They do the whole surgery where it creates a vagina yes um you gotta think it's gonna be like a newborn vagina if you look in part two of the movie they actually show celeste going through that in the beginning yeah, I remember of the story. dilation and all the steps that it take yeah um nobody says it's gonna be easy you gotta think you're a whole new person and you gotta understand too even transitioning isn't easy because now you're going through puberty all over again so you're gonna right. have the mood swings you're gonna have all of that stuff that's why i don't understand when people be like that you can't get a period just because you know a period is so much more than just blood you get oh, what I'm okay. saying? So you, you have the whole emotional phase to go with it. So hold up. So no mm -hmm. period. Let's go back to the emotional mm -hmm. phase. All right. So women are getting, um, when they get their period, like their hormones. The hormones, you typically the way it works, you get on hormones before they get allow you to have gender reassignment. Because they want to make sure that this is a lifelong commitment that you're committed to. Right. So you got to go through therapy and everything. When a girl tells you that she's fully transitioned, mm -hmm. that girl, she knew what she was doing. You get what I'm saying? Because you got to go through so much to make it happen. The government yeah. not they just They got to prove it. it. They have what, to prove that they're in the said. right yeah. mind. Yeah. Right. That it's not just done on a whim. Because the thing is, you do have what I like to call transfer trend. Which is some of the girls who do it but for the attention, but they don't really purely want to be a female. You get what I'm saying? Mm. Like, look, no offense, I don't know her personally, but look at Caitlyn. She transitioned oh, and dated a girl. Caitlyn so you, you mean tell me you transitioned but, to be a lesbian? But this is a thing. Oh yeah. Make it make sense. <laughs> but because of how you feel mm -hmm. as a transgender doesn't mean you're what you're sexually attracted to. 
But this is my thing. You transition to, like, let's just elaborate on that. You transitioned to be a female, from male to female. First of all, doing it at 60, you got to come in that hope because that's a lot of work, girl. Because at that point, (laughs) ain't nothing going to change you. Ain't nothing going to change you. Them looks ain't going to change. That voice ain't going to change. No hormones going to fix none of that. But Oh, that's why the voice hits. Baby, the voice ain't going to change because that's a grown-ass man. Them yes. are, are a grown ass situation. So the boys didn't change because of the age. Because because you gotta think, going through puberty, you're starting all over again. You get oh. most of your puberty as a child. So that's why also too, I want to clear this up. I hate when people go, kids don't know what they want to be. Because they've known their whole life. They just are afraid of the response behind it. That's right. why I support D-Wade for supporting his child. Absolutely. Regardless of what everybody else say, his child knows. Mm-hmm. And they keep, people keep trying to use it like, oh, she don't know. She's just child. No, she's not. Right. What it is is us as a black community, we're so fixated on making everybody the same because it's the norm. Right. They're expressing what a child comes to you mm-hmm. and say. If she knows she was born in the wrong body, now put her through the whole hormone thing. Let her go through it and see how easy it is not so that she can ultimately make that decision but you cannot take somebody's decision you get what i'm saying and starting that young is the best phase because they haven't gone through puberty like that yet so they have a chance to actually become a woman and be passable Mm -hmm. you can't get somebody like a caitlin Mm -hmm. and make them passable because first of all she's already grew to six something caitlin is giving matumbo no offense (laughs) (laughs) seriously she's a full-grown person so to go back to um d-way's uh daughter Mm -hmm. when do you think is a good age to actually physically transition because i know you just mentioned something i mm-hmm. never heard before is like hey it might be better to do it before you're like hitting full-grown puberty i think around that puberty age between 12 13 they can start on hormones they don't have to go all the way through it but start on the hormones the reason i'm gonna tell you why is because look because i feel like us as a society when you're not letting them do that you're setting them up for failure no offense because any trans will tell you it's harder to transition as an adult because again a lot you're pretty much full grown so stuff is not going to change the way you want it to be, especially if you want them to be passable. That's the word that y'all are missing. Mm-hmm. Passable means that if she walks past you on the street, you don't know. It's her story to tell you. It should not be a scarlet letter on her forehead because she looks that part because she didn't have a choice. You get what I'm saying? She did it so late. So I feel like 12, 13 is okay to start having those conversations. Letting your child know, do the research. Letting your child know this is what you're about to go through. So that by 14, 15, you get what I'm saying? They may be starting on the hormones. Because the thing is, the hormones are reversible. You can just stop. Okay. You get what I'm saying? You can have some estrogen in you, but they can always switch it back over and revert back to testosterone if they wanted to. It's just when you get that bottom. It's just that when you get that bottom, it's a done deal. The point of no yeah, return. that's when it's the point of no return. But, I mean, from what I've read, you can return Put to the it. I don't know what it's going to look like. Is the, is the balls going away, too? or just? Well, they do out there. I'm going to tell you, go on YouTube because I'm not a doctor, but okay. YouTube has it where you can watch the full surgery from start to finish. I'm it's watch actually one. quite fascinating, guys, because you just wouldn't believe it would look that way. Yeah. On All how right. they do it. So, um, mm-hmm. I just... I don't know how I would feel as a parent that if I think I would support my kid, but mm-hmm. you're making a, I don't, you did say it's reversible. reversible. Mm-hmm. Most you're of You're making a, a life changing, mm-hmm. body changing decision at 12 or 13. But look whose life we're talking about though. No, but this is what I'm trying to tell you. It's not a decision that's made lightly. Yeah. It's conversations that's had to build up to that. Because first of all, one thing I'm going to say about the black community, we're in denial about our kids. Yeah. You know damn well Johnny was right here prancing around doing his purettes at two. I had, I you knew. I had, you knew. I seen kids that's like, without a doubt, you know. Yeah, you there. know it. But the thing is, when I hear people say their parents are forcing stuff on kids because the kids know. But you have conversations with your kids. Stop trying to make them be what you want them to be. Start embracing who they are. If they're telling you certain things, listen to them. Because they know them more than you do. You may think you know them, but they know who they are. And the thing is, parents don't understand is you're messing up your kids later. Identity crisis is real. Yeah. Where they're spending their whole lives trying to be the perfect idea of what their parents want them to be, that they lose who they are. That's why you have a lot of suicides and stuff in trans because they weren't able to express themselves now they're getting thrown into a brave new world figuring it out on their own because they didn't have that support so and it's overwhelming because i'm telling you the hormone replacement it is a journey mm. before you even get to the surgery you got to be on hormones for at least the year you got to think going through puberty all over again imagine going from female to male 
You've been on tampons and all this stuff every month your whole life. Sounds good. Yeah, yeah. Wait, Wait but, what good I'm saying is, but what I'm saying is, I'll you know play. all the emotional to come with it, all yeah, that stuff. Yeah. Now it's just cut off. You're starting over as a guy. Right. Now you got to go through the voice changing. You got to go through the facial hair coming up in spots where you might be used to shaving. Right. Now you over here growing a Georgia bush. <laughs> so it's like, you know, stuff like that Georgia. that people don't know. <laughs> Seriously, your calf muscles might start getting Okay, big. for real. You know, it's giving the muscle mass is changing. Your yeah. skin might go from soft to extra rough now. It's all that little stuff that people Man. don't see exactly. <laughs> Men with the dry ass hands. Oh, I'll be like, yo, you think, oh, can you get rid of my dry hands at Hormones least? Hormones may make your feet grow. It may make a lot of stuff. Yes, because that stuff that happens through puberty, boys change shoe sizes rapidly. So you got to think all that little stuff that people's not thinking. Right. Now you have to think about. So imagine putting a child through that and. They may decide at the end, this is not for me. That's yeah. why I think it's important that you do allow them to do it. Because what's going to happen is you're going to have them waiting until later where they're not passable, where they're at the risk of being bodily harmed just for being who they are. Because mm-hmm. you know, when you see some of the old school trans, you be like, girl, you know that's one. Like, you can't, you know, yeah. think about being in a club. <laughs> and you're sure. in a club and you got a trans person that you know is a trans person. Yeah. And they're in a regular club. Mm-hmm. Think about how them looks going to be as soon as yeah. they walk through the door. Yeah. You don't even get a chance to get to know them. You don't even get a chance to feel their energy or anything because you're already judging them. Like, ooh, she's a big looking at big feet. You okay. know what I'm saying? It's automatic judgment. Okay. So, first of all, <laughs> when did you... Mm-hmm. How old were you when you actually started transitioning? Um, because of society, 20. Okay. I was grown. Okay. But that if I would have had my choice, I wouldn't have. And you you don't have bottom surgery. Who don't? Oh, you do? Girl, man, the business I pay you. Okay. <laughs> and it ain't this one. I respect that. But, do honey, have, just know it's good over here. Wow. Right. Do you have top surgery? <laughs> Mind my business. Well, I'm gonna tell you, the hormones I actually is gonna get. No, the hormones actually gonna give you all that. These are naturally mine. Those no. are naturally yours. Yes, the hormones give you that. Those all I got was a lip. Some plan. Sorry. You said what, baby? Come let the viewers feel. Really come let the viewers feel. Come let the viewers feel. But that's what I'm saying. So imagine yours go away from working out. Imagine being on hormones. It's gonna make them grow. Then I'm gonna tell you, as you gain weight, like women, they get bigger. Like mine, I'm gonna tell you, when I first started on hormones, I was already a C. I'm a double D, bitch. That COVID weight was no joke. Oh, so, so, you, so they grow as you gain weight, yes. That's crazy. Because you got to think it's that. fat, it's tissue. So yeah. where's your fat going now? To its source. That's how when girls get BBLs, their fat goes to their fat source. Right. If the source is in your ass, it's going to your ass. Yeah. I never knew that. Mm-hmm. So you said earlier, like, it's on a person to tell their story, right? Mm-hmm. So when you meet someone and they're, like, hitting on you, right? Something like a guy? Yeah. So Do honestly, you tell them that I already know where you're going. <laughs> The initial conversation is not that because you got to know your surroundings, time and place, right? Right. Mm-hmm. And because I am passable, it is a struggle because you always have to have that story. You always have to have that conversation, right? Mm-hmm. Because I like transparency. But if I'm in a club, I'm not going to say, hi, my name is Terry and I'm trans. Right, no, right. why? That's like her saying, hi, my name is Melanie and I got herpes. No, they don't oh, do damn. it. No, I'll tell you all the time. But it's yeah. the truth. Right, Melanie. It's the truth. Like, yeah, yeah. They don't do that. You got to do it in a safe space. Now, do I believe I in going months down the road and all, no right. now it's typically within the first phone conversation if I feel like it's projecting like it's going somewhere yeah. but if it's just a no hand by I can already tell nigga you ain't about shit no right. we don't need to have that conversation because it's none of your business at that point now if I feel like I'm going to be intimate with you I'm liking you then I'm going to tell you my story you get what I'm saying okay. same way you're going to start opening up to me when you feel more comfortable around me because yeah. I don't never meet nobody as long as I've been in Atlanta walk up to me and say hey I got HIV but I know damn what that rap sheet is long <laughs> Yeah. Let's be honest, because yeah. it's a deal breaker, right? For some people, okay. and they miss out on getting to know you. But that's the risk you take in this community. You know, mm-hmm. you're being prejudged before you even get a chance to, you know, vibe. So has that ever happened to where you didn't tell someone, and then you told them, and they maybe were like not with that shit? So I mean, with me, I'm gonna be honest, because I'm passable, like an eighty percent chance that is not gonna happen. But <laughs> I'm, no, I'm just being honest because yeah. again, like I told y'all earlier, men are physical creatures. Right. So the physicality of this looks amazing. Right. You know, so it's like that's what they see first. Then once you're starting to get into my personality, that entices you more, you know. Uh-huh. So now it is some when I tell them, you know, they might be like, nah, I can't do it. But then also I'm going to tell you too, a lot of the reason is because of society. If yeah. society never made it feel like it was wrong, mm-hmm. then more people would be on it. That's why you have so many closeted people. You have so many artists in this industry who have dibbled and dabbled. We all know in Hollywood, everybody tries stuff. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? But you would have more of this receptive if we were more open and didn't ridicule and stone like they did Jesus. Mm-hmm. If people were more embracing, like, okay, you like what you like, da-da-da. Can women say that, but then you still don't want to date the men? 
Right. What if he likes, because you got to think, a man might like a trans woman for the physicality because she embodies a female. Right. See, Big Sexy said that, and I think... Um, they was on his ass about that. They was, but I think... But it's the truth. But it, a lot of straight people was on it like, so you saying men is just horny and want to fuck. But the thing is... Uh, it, yeah. It, yes. It, Welcome to Atlanta. Any girl that's 18. <laughs> and it's sometimes they ain't not even 18. 18. I feel like people are the... Com- not not saying mm-hmm. every man. Don't get it fucked up. But right, right. Mm-hmm. I feel like people in the community know the... The dark secrets of yep. the shit that's going on. Yeah, they be knowing a lot of them beforehand. But I'm gonna tell you too, the reason why everybody and I hate this stigma, stigma too when they be like, "Oh, don't move to Atlanta because all the men are DL." Baby, they're DL everywhere. Men love that bad is so true. Men love bad bitches everywhere. That's Let's what just I'm say learning. that. But in Atlanta, what it is 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 more accepted. It's right. more the norm, people so that out. people can you know mm-hmm. be more upfront about it. Absolutely. Compared to because I see stories like that on my Facebook and stuff all the time where women be like, "Oh, I tell my sisters don't move to Atlanta because it is, baby, you don't." Yeah. Know Baby daddy is already like that. Right. You just don't know. That and but that's also the part that I hate too. When women go, if a man openly told them they still wouldn't want them, baby probably with them now. Like, but you just don't want to talk about it. Mm-hmm. You don't want to talk about because I'm just being honest. The niggas that be in my DMs, you would never fathom. Right. But they do. And it's the reality of the world we live in. Mm-hmm. But again, it's not our place to judge somebody. Cause mm-hmm. you get what I'm saying? Some of these men be trying it. Some of these men be liking it. Mm-hmm. You, just like in college, every girl had a slutty college moment where we might've kissed the girl, you know, and we liked it. You <laughs> I know didn't go saying? to college, but so that was you. I'm just saying, it's the judgment of us, especially in this black community. Cause yeah. did you see how, no offense, I'm gonna bring up Caitlyn again because she's of the minority. Mm-hmm. When she came out, the acceptance that she got she immediately, got she got Vogue cover. Yeah. How did you get a Vogue cover as a trans woman? And, that you, and you weren't even a full trans woman. You were a weak old trans woman. They went OD you ain't even give T.S. Madison. Felt so bad. You didn't even give T.S. Madison a cover right. of Vogue who's been walking this walk. You right. didn't give Angelica Russell was on the number one show mm-hmm. a, a Vogue cover, but you gave it to Caitlyn Jenner. Yeah. But the white, white Caucasian privilege. community, they embraced her. The black community let that be, would have been one of them. Oh no, that's Amanda. Because we are so hard on each other yeah. when we should be uplifting each other yeah. honestly you should want a trans friend because she's gonna tell you if your baby daddy wants you uh, <laughs> so what what type of men are you attracted to oh, are you heterosexual like or are you like what's your sexual preference too by the way um i kiss the baddest bitch if you dare me but okay, <laughs> i like men like i love okay. the masculinity of men i like men that embodied my father because he was a strong man okay. so i like men who are secure with who they are because that's what it's all about is embracing who you are mm-hmm. and who you like because you can't help who you like sometimes. The law of attraction is the law of attraction. Right. Because the thing is, people f- keep going on that physical that you miss the mental and that's why so many relationships that have failed because you did not know your partner. Mm-hmm. You were too busy just trying to get stuck on her being a good look and what she looked like than who she really was. Because now that I tell you, she was nasty from the beginning. You just bypassed it because it was cute enough for you in the beginning. Mm. You get what I'm saying? So when I meet men, I go off of the characteristics, what you show me. Do you treat your mother right? Because that's going to tell me if you're going to treat me right. I'm old school. So I was raised by two loving parents until my mom passed away. Mm. So I saw what it's like to actually experience love, embrace love. That's why I walk in life. So but I like, throw some shade though, bitch. Tra- <laughs> trades are like gay men. Um... Again, like I told y'all early on, I'm not into labels. I hate the whole label thing because... Or like men that don't want... I mean, I like masculine men. So that could be in any form. Like, I'll be honest with you. I'll take a gay man if he was masculine as fuck. Yeah. And you better... It's only room for one bitch in this house. And so you better be walking around here talking about, oh, girl, get out. <laughs> let me just let you right out this front door. Because yeah. that's just not my type. Because yeah. if that's the case, I've always thought that if, if it was a feminine guy, I'd rather date a female. Yeah. Because it's two bitches in the same house. Right. I can't deal with that. You well, know? I'm saying, like, as far as when I say that, I'm saying, mm-hmm. like, a man that will... Y'all, my girl be- is hitting it, y'all. Uh, she, she ready to go outside. Okay. <laughs> a, a guy that... um. We could wrap up. No, you're good. But um, a guy but that will represent you mm-hmm. and, and actually be in a relationship with mm-hmm. you. Because, like, like, I told Big Sexy, he was only one of our three, two or three guys that we actually interviewed. Mm-hmm. So he, he basically was saying, like, he likes a masculine guy, but they won't really rep him. You know what I mean? Like... That's because they're insecure with who they are. I'm going to yeah. tell you, my dating life is actually different because I'm kind of bad. I'm a serial dater. Because um, I date, I'm like Lori Harvey. I date until I find what I'm looking for. I'm just being honest. There is. Because the thing is, that's what dating is. You date yeah. multiple people to find where your connection is. I feel like so many people jump into relationships not knowing their partner didn't want to cry wolf when the shit hit the fan. Mm-hmm. It's always going to hit the fan. Mm-hmm. So that's why I date around until I find the connection that I need because I'm more of a sapiosexual. So people who don't know what that is, What's I'm more into mental say, and intellect. Okay. I like a person who 
is secure with who they are. They don't care what you think about them because that's the person that's going to defend me. Because mm-hmm. dating a trans woman is already hard in its own. So I need a man who's going to be secure enough to know who he is that he could be like, oh, this is my girl and I don't give a fuck what you think. Period. Especially when it's in the limelight. But then you got to think about it like this. I'm probably more accomplished than half these niggas yes, girls right now. Is. So it's the thing like, their girl's not on billboards. I was. Okay. You get what I'm saying? Their, their girl's not shining in the movie screen. I oh, was. Yeah. So it's giving that type of quality. You get yeah. what I'm saying? And then I like to be at home. Who don't like to cook for that okay. man? You know, being okay. all cute and dainty. <laughs> yeah, I think people make the conversation just more confusing than it's supposed yes. to be. When it's very simple, simple. you know what I'm saying? It's a and, law of attraction. Yeah. Look at you. You're going to go get, I presume, you're what? gonna go get a film. You're not gonna get DJ XL because you're oh, attracted she, to that uh, feminine energy. My but XL, fine though, baby. Oh, yeah, okay. I gotta give it to XL. I dated she a few studs. I, I text a few studs. You Look, text, but did you actually date? Not the you, not the judgment to, Did oh, you, you actually date? Not the ju- not trying to be judged. Because judge. you're more into the feminine energy. Correct. And see, that's what it is. It's like the law of attraction. So you got to balance each other out for a successful relationship. So for me, who's ultra feminine, extra girly, I need the masculine energy to balance me out. I'm not going to go get Nikki because Nikki may be fun to have, right. but Nikki ain't going to be forever because as soon as she starts crying, bitch, shut up. Right. Like, but I'm you see what I'm saying? i crying. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I'm not trying to cry with your ass. We over here once a month debriefing. No. <laughs> like, I need a nigga that's like, girl, get your ass in the room. Go yeah. make me breakfast. Okay. Okay, daddy. Chill out. You know? <laughs> Anyone that's gonna choke me out when I need to be choked up. Oh, okay. you're toxic. Oh, giving real toxic. <laughs> but, but wait. A good to- toxic. A good toxic. Because it's the giving, you know, every now and then I need a little roughing. But I like <laughs> the sensuality of being a woman. Yeah. Being able to be vulnerable with my man, trying to force him to be vulnerable. Because mm-hmm. a lot of men that are masculine, they don't believe in vulnerability. That's they don't want to show their girl that emotional side. So I like, with me, I like to say it's kind of like the best of both worlds. Because you mm-hmm. kind of get the male best friend, even though I don't act masculine, but I get it. But. You also get that femininity, that soft side, that sexuality that you want. Gotcha. Okay, that's what's um, up. There was a clip, and I don't want to mm-hmm. go back to Big Sexy, but he said this, <laughs> and he openly said this, and uh, it was a lot of pushback, right? Mm-hmm. And I don't want to keep like beating a dead horse, right? Mm-hmm. But he basically was saying, because there's some, there's some energy out there against straight women and transsexual women. What do you but, mean? Um, so... I don't know if it's just the stuff that goes viral, but basically this is what he said and then we can go off of Mm -hmm. that. So basically he was saying he thinks straight women and or cis, which a lot of straight women Mm -hmm. hate being labeled labeled that. Yeah, Mm -hmm. Um, that they kind of are against transgender women because the insecurity of their man might be creeping with a trans woman or just not knowing, Mm -hmm. the insecurity of not knowing, so you kind of, envy the trans woman i think it's deeper than that do you think what do you think do you think there is actually uh, i don't want to say a beef or nothing i don't think it's a beef or i don't think it's a beef i think that it's first of all misunderstanding because from lack of communication lack of open conversation i'm gonna tell you i actually i actually sat on an amazing panel with um it's called For Our Sisters. I sat on it. Her name was Lisa. She mm-hmm. actually invited me to it. And with that panel, they had trans women, straight women. And to hear some of the concerns, first of all, I'm going to say this. Society pits us against each other. Because right. you see how when that first thing came out, instantly it was the attack of battle of the sexes. You get what I'm right. saying? When, first of all, we're not competitors in that way. I don't know no trans woman that's saying, please give me a period. You can have it. Right. I don't know who wants to be right here bleeding. I you not can too much. Have it. I'm just saying. Now, don't get me wrong. No, we they, want men do put us in competition with each other of the superior because of the preference of a man. But the thing is, when it comes to women, we should not be in competition because the thing is, y'all can do something that I never can do, that I can only dream to do. Y'all can give birth to a child. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? I can't do that. How can I compete with you? Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? My mother was a woman. I was raised by an amazing black Japanese woman. You get what I'm saying? So I was raised like that. So how can I dim- diminish what you go through as a black woman or as any woman? Mm-hmm. They go through anything. So I give them my hat because the strength it takes to be a woman now, they're the most unprotected species. I thought that trans was, but women are because they feel the most defenseless until they're in a unity. Mm -hmm. So for me, I think that it's just a misunderstanding because women like me, I'm not competing with you. Right. I actually embrace you. You're my sister. We're in this together, just in the same fight, but a different battle. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? We all want to be accepted. We all want to be acknowledged for the contribution we've made to society. Mm -hmm. 
And I think that that's the problem is that so many people want us to hate each other. And some women fall into it. And you, when you brought up the insecurity part about they feel like the man, it's always about the man attention. Why is everything always about a man? Okay. Why can't it be about the fact that we're competing for jobs already? You get what I'm saying? We're competing against the men to be more superior because again the men have always had everything pretty much they were always given the high paying jobs they were always given that and instead of us embracing each other we're trying to pull the other one down to get up to the top when we could be stepping on each other to get up there you get what i'm saying mm -hmm. we could be using each other to pull each other up mm -hmm. so that's the issue that i've always had with it even when that whole debate came out you'll see my instagram i did not speak on it because my feelings are different and right. that's why i hate sometimes um, when people look at me as just a trans woman because they expect me to say certain things because I'm trans. I have to agree with every person. No, right. I'm my own person. Yes. Everybody's life experience is different. For mine, I would rather uplift you than diminish you. Mm -hmm. I would, now, don't get me right. Bashing, that's not right of no kind for anybody. Mm -hmm. But somebody else's story is not your story. Stop that's letting other people write your story. That. And that's where I'm at with it. I would rather embrace everybody. I embrace you. I embrace her. You know, because we all have something that we can contribute to society. Yeah. yeah. I, and I do think, like, like you just said, like, everybody's not the same. Because, mm -hmm. like, it it were it was a few crazy ass things that I've heard from certain trans women. Mm -hmm. But then I talked to others and they're like, I don't agree with that shit. And then a lot of cisgender women, they start to just listen to that one woman that one. thinking that she's a spokesperson mm -hmm. for the whole trans community when the reality is everybody's different and we all have different perspectives. Within the community in general. I'll be honest with you, that's a big fear of mine. That's why I don't live by labels, because people put you in that box yeah. and they feel like you represent everybody. And I'm not saying I'm not happy to represent a community, but I myself is bigger than just the community. You right. get what I'm saying? What I'm accomplishing is for my family. It's mm -hmm. for people who didn't believe they could do it. It's not about just being trans. My story relates to cisgender women. Mm -hmm. A girl who felt like she could not make it. She was too dark. Mine is more of other hurdles than just being trans. trans you get what right. I'm saying? Because trans is just a label, but that does not have to define who you are. Yeah, it's not the end all be It's all. not the end all, and that's what people try to make it mm. that oh you're trans this is all you can be right no i'm not in the army this is not all i can be right <laughs> I, mean, I can be everything i can be a multi-dimensional woman true you get what i'm saying and that's what i love about podcasts and stuff like y'all yeah. you could actually see the authenticity of a person yeah. and you could actually hear them in real time and not what people want them to say mm -hmm. yeah and that's why even like how many people we know out mm -hmm. here and the episode number we're on, you're the first trans woman to come on here, is because y'all probably are the least that we hear from. So when you have four or five so, people that speak very loudly mm -hmm. and give this perception, that's what a lot of people are thinking, everybody thinks. But that's why we love the show, because we get so many people that even look just like us, mm -hmm. but live totally different. Different lives. And I love that because it just shows like, yo, first of all, you can't judge a book by its cover. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And um, people like to put, like you said, just, oh, you're a transgender woman. Like, mm -hmm. that's your whole life. When it's like, okay, once I'm that, I'm myself. I'm an individual. And when the cameras go off, yeah. I'm TRJ, snuggled up in that snuggie. Okay. The same girl that will cuss you out and pray for you tomorrow. But <laughs> I think, too, is because a lot of people don't want to dig past the surface. Mm -hmm. They always want to take that initial judgment and run with it. That's why I make sure that when people meet me, you meet me. Right. You don't meet that. So if you do come up to me, it's very rare. I can tell you in my whole career that I've had people walk up to me and say, oh, you're the trans girl, ever. Mm -hmm. It's all because I live off of my talent. Mm -hmm. That's what I represent myself. I don't get on Instagram and do stuff to go viral for a moment. Mm -hmm. Because to me, a moment is just a moment. Right. I need a lifelong career. Right. So I go off of my work. I want you to know that when you say my name, you're going to assemble the hard work and blood, sweat, equity that I put into this. Mm -hmm. You're going to say, oh, TRJ, oh, I saw her on No Homo Podcast, but did you see her in Secret Society? Okay. She Period. Killed. You said, I'm like, oh, did you see her billboard for bare skin? Which brings me up to my point, because I bought y'all some goodies, because y'all keep trying to get Oh, them. thank okay. you. These are directly geared towards y'all, but to the women in y'all life, because y'all like to play. We do it. <laughs> I, I know. Both of y'all have girlfriends, because I was over there checking my head. <laughs> <laughs> but um, so I am I have a new partnership with Selfie Cosmetics so my brand is the luxury lip gloss line what makes it luxury I actually have one to show you this is our clear from the Be Bold collection if you look at it it has a light in it oh, and a mirror so that when you're in the club <laughs> when you're in the club you no longer have to run to the bathroom and fight for the mirror you can just take it out put it on 
That is yeah. lit. That's that luxury fun. lip gloss. <laughs> so <laughs> we, it lit. comes in four colors. You have wine, red, nude, and then you have clear, which is my favorite. I wear it every day. So I did bring you two one for your girls' you. holiday. You gonna get two points. Appreciate now, it. I miss you because your girls deserve to be in luxury. Excel gonna wear well. this. Uh uh-uh. uh. <laughs> Excel ain't wearing that because I think one of y'all got red, one of y'all got nude. <laughs> which one I got? Um, it's Sam and Bob. Selfie. No, that's oh. the name of the brand. Sloppy child. toppy. Sloppy toppy for the sloppy. The big apple. <laughs> yeah, big apple is red because y'all think of New York. Okay, she like red. Yeah, yeah exactly. Like Thank then you. you got sloppy toppy, which is more of the nude color. Um, but you can also go order on my website, selfiecosmetics.com, as well as if you go to my Instagram, T A R I E, the letter J, number four, E V A, it's in my bio. Go yeah. shop now. And send us the link and we'll make sure we post that. Of course. Yeah. I appreciate y'all for supporting. Yeah, congrats. We looking forward to uh, watching this. I'm going to go watch it tonight because I ain't going to lie. I was like, we're the number three at, you know what I'm saying? Number three been waiting on you. We yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm on the way, you know what I'm saying? And um, just want to wish you success, you know, thank and you. Uh, can't wait to see what you do next. And thank you for coming here and being, yeah. like I said, the first trans woman and just being so transparent with us. Not No pun intended. No pun intended. <laughs> no pun intended but, Not um, transparent, we, being trans. Right. <laughs> we really, oh, we really like appreciate it. That was a word. Nah, you know, a little, little bar, you know, a little You song, know, it's song. giving oh, Onika. Yeah. Okay. What I told you, sire. <laughs> All right, not too much on me. <laughs> right, y'all. Oh, is it sorry, gonna guys. be? Is it gonna be a four or no? So it better I be a four to no five or six. Let us pray. But yes. all I can tell you is, guys, keep flooding the comments of Miasha. Um, is Miasha official on Instagram, Secret Society page on Instagram, because she actually does hear y'all. Even though Secret Society 3 was the end of a trilogy, mm-hmm. they write stuff all the time. But y'all were the reason why we even had T in a two, then a three, okay. because T was not in the books. Okay. Y'all created T. So I thank y'all for that. So just keep flooding her so that T can come back and maybe we can get more story. Yeah. Find out why T's so solid. <laughs> and we need and we need to know how much on the red carpet. Red carpet. You know Facts. Saying? Bring well, us we, through that media coverage next we time. Appreciate okay, we got y'all. You. We appreciate you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Know how much y'all. Yeah. Gotta put my lip gloss on. <laughs> <laughs> lip gloss popping. Whole lot of gay shit. Whole lot of gay, 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 gay. gay. I like, I like. Boss Brit. We certify. And DJ Excel. Uh.